Hello. In this video, we are going to solve the least squares problem for a linear model. And from the previous lecture, we have already introduced the least squares loss for this linear model, which is the uh, quadratic Euclidean distance between the outputs y and the model predictions, which are z, the regressor matrix, times w, the parameter vector. We can represent this squared Euclidean uh, loss also here as y minus z uh, times w transpose times y minus z w. And in order to solve this, uh, or to start solving this, we can basically just continue uh, multiplying this here out. What do we get from that? That is then basically y transpose minus w transpose times z transpose times parenthesis y minus z times w. And from that, what we get is obviously y transpose times y minus w transpose times z transpose times y. Uh, what do we have else? Do, 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 do. Um, minus y transpose times that w and plus w transpose times that transpose times z times w. Okay, so this is basically what we get from it. Uh, here we have an unnecessary parenthesis. Nobody needs that. We can delete that. And if we have a look at this multiplied or uh, expanded cost function, we can basically identify three different terms or types of terms. The one term here which we see is basically a bias or an offset. Y transpose times Y, that is independent of our parameter vector W, so that seems to be more or less unrelated to, or uh, yeah, not so optimizable in that sense. Then here, these two terms, here we have an W transpose from the left-hand side, and here we have an W from the right-hand side, so these are linear terms with respect to w, and here this term, w transpose from the left and w uh, from the right, that seems to be a quadratic term in terms of the cost function. So that means if we visualize our cost problem, so let's say we have a scalar w and the loss of w, that this bias linear term and quadratic term basically ends up in something like this. So a quadratic convex cost function and we are interested in finding this, let's call it W star for the moment, the parameter which, or parameter vector, if that would be vectorial, which minimizes this loss. And since the loss is quadratic, we actually can find this in a closed form because what the characteristic optimization condition for W star is that the first order derivative, so the gradient of L with respect to W is basically just zero, right? So that's uh, very nice and we will find this in a closed form in the following uh, minutes. So therefore, our task is find the minimum of the cost function. And our approach for that is calculate the gradient nabla w with respect to the loss cost function L of w. And this is, of course, identical to the partial derivatives of the cost with respect to the first component, so the first parameter w1, until the partial derivative of the last component, wq, and we consider this some kind of a um, column vector. And as we said, we are interested here as the optimality condition to find the point in the parameter space where the gradient, the first order derivative is zero. So we basically need to set this to zero in the following. Okay. So we need to find the gradient with respect to uh, w. So that's uh, basically we need to find the gradient with respect to these four terms. And we can do calculate that uh, in a first step. 
So we calculate the gradient with respect to W of Y transpose times Y. So that's the easiest part. It's independent from W. These are just our exogenous measurements. So that's basically then a zero vector which comes out of this. Then we have the gradient of W transpose times Z transpose times Y. And this is, you can rephrase that by rewriting it and what we basically get from this is Y transpose times Z. You can also look that up into the uh, matrix cookbook from Anderson, which we will link you down in the video description. Then we have nabla W of this term, which is Y transpose, transpose times Z times W. That's also easy because W is calculated from the right hand side. So this is also just Y transpose times Z. So exactly the same as the previous one. This is good. We can combine this later on and the last one, nabla W of this quadratic term, W transpose times Z transpose times Z times W. You can also look that up in some matrix linear um, book like the matrix cookbook I've already mentioned and this is 2 times W transpose times Z transpose times Z, right? Perfect. So we then can combine these four gradients or parts of the gradients with respect to these different terms of our loss function, add them together and what we get from this is minus two times this Y transpose times Z, right, from these derivatives uh, gradients of the linear term plus the gradient from this last term which is two times W transpose times Z transpose times Z and we said that should be still zero. Okay, so what can we see here? Uh, first of all is that obviously the two is more or less unnecessary here. We can basically cancel that out and in order to make things a little bit more clear we can basically put this Y that should be here transpose of course but this Y transpose times Z can be brought to the other side. So what do we get from that is W transpose times Z transpose times Z is equal to Y transpose times Z. So I've just brought this to the other side. Then we are interested in normally Y and not Y transpose. So that's why we can basically transpose just both sides of the equation in the next step. What we get from this is then Z transpose times Y on the right hand side. And here on the left hand side we get basically Y times Z transpose times Z, right? So transposing both sides uh, independently from each other, I don't change the equation. And what we see here, so Z transpose Z times W is equal to Z transpose times Y, this is now basically our normal equation because what we have here is a matrix which is Q times Q, right? So this is a quadratic matrix. This here is a vector, our parameter vector, with Q elements. And here on the right hand side we have Z transpose times Y. This also ends up in a vector with Q elements, right? So what we have seen here or what we see as an intermediate outcome is that due to the least squares approach that our initial over-determinant equation system is now basically a well-defined linear equation system with Q um, rows and Q unknowns. So that means if this matrix Z transpose times Z, which becomes a Q times Q matrix, if this is of full rank and can be um, inverted, that we can solve for W. And we will assume that in the following because in Z and therefore in Z transpose times Z, 
there are our data points, our regressors. So that means that we as engineers are able to choose these data points wisely such that this matrix or the output of this matrix multiplication has full rank. And therefore, we can basically just solve our least squares problem. W star is identical to the inverse Z transpose times Z inverse times the right hand side Z transpose times Y if, as I've said, we assume that the rank of Z transpose times Z is full and this of course means here in this case that the rank is Q because that would mean that we will have lin uh, Q linear independent rows and we can directly solve for W. We have also multiple options to solve this normal equation here. The nominal solution would be to take the so-called pseudo inverse which we basically calculate here with respect to Z or to take the explicit inverse of Z transpose times Z. However, of course, at that point of the normal equation, we can also apply alternative um, approaches, for example, like a QR decomposition in case this um, matrix here is a little bit numerical difficult, such that the explicit inverse might become problematic. However, that is more like a numerical detail. The key takeaway message is that giving our least squares problem for a linear model, we are able to get a closed form solution so we can find the best possible parameter vector w which minimizes our quadratic loss and this is just dependent on our observables, our so-called regressors, so the z, the z matrix and our measured outputs, the y vector and that means we can so lightly obtain it in a closed form out of the data which we have obtained previously. In the next video, we will also see a first application example, including some numerical programming code, how we can utilize this uh, closed form linear least square solution in an engineering application. Thank you.